Hi everyone. We have previously discussed the change of probability measure for Brownian motion and diffusion processes. So we shall do similar things for the jump processes. In this video, we shall confine ourselves to the simple Poisson process, which we have covered in details before. So I'm going to assume familiarity with the Poisson process, though you only need to remember the high level details. Right, so let's say we have a Poisson process with parameter lambda. So we know it means that the probability of a jump and a time interval of length delta t is equal to lambda times dt. And then the probability of the process taking a value n at some finite horizon is as follows. So t has to be finite for reasons we shall see very shortly. Now this probability representation is the basic elementary probability distribution which doesn't go a long way as we know. So one should be talking about probabilities in the abstract sense. Remember those sigma algebra and probabilities of those subsets of the sigma algebra. If you're familiar with those things then you should be interpreting everything we are saying in the abstract term. But if you're not, then it doesn't matter for this video as the basic intuition should be enough because everything is going to be relatively simple as we're going to be focusing on one dimension. Now, this is the probability density, which is like the differential of the probability measure where P underscore lambda just means that this is the probability measure associated with the process with parameter lambda. Now let's say we have another process with parameter tilde lambda. So the probability will be as follows. Now let's divide the second by the first. So the ends and the denominators cancel and we combine the exponential terms which means the exponent of the ones and the denominator goes upstairs so we changed its sign we cancel the t's and then combine the two power functions as well and then factor out t in the exponential term now we can take everything inside the exponents of the exponential which is just down to the use of logarithm and exponential so let's take the logarithm and we know the logarithm of something to the power n is equal to n times the logarithm of that something. And we can now take exponential of both sides. And then we know that the exponential and logs are inverses of each other. So they cancel each other to give us what we have. And the right hand side stays as it is. Now we can make the substitution and bring down the exponential term as it is. Now we can combine the two exponential terms. As you know, multiplying two exponential terms mean you just add the terms in the exponents. And this is the red on negative derivative, but we are not there yet. So let's assume that the tilde lambda is equal to gamma times lambda. This gamma has to be such that the tilde lambda is finite for obvious reasons. It's very obvious here because we are dealing with constants. But if we have the variable, say, lambda deterministic function of time, then it might be slightly complicated. But the requirement stays. And now we can substitute for the first tilde lambda and then for the second. Now the two lambdas cancel. So we are left with the log of gamma. And then we factor out lambda in the second term. And this is the red on negative derivative. Now you can see that t has to be finite for if it could go infinity, then the exponent could be minus infinity or plus infinity, which means the red on negative derivative would be zero or infinity. So that's why we want the capital T to be finite. Now this red on negative derivative is like a density, so it needs to have certain properties which we need 
to check. So the first one is it got to be positive, which is easy to check because we have the exponential of something which is not minus infinity, so it got to be greater than zero. It has to be martingale, which requires a little bit of work to prove. So let's represent this radon nicotine derivative process by lambda t. And we want to take its expected value conditional on the filtration at an earlier time s. We can substitute for lambda t. Now this term is deterministic, so we can take it out of the expectation and the rest of the expectation stays. Now we add and subtract the value of n at time s. Now this n underscore s is known given the filtration at s, so we can take it out of the expectation. And we then have this exponential term at the front. Now to calculate the expectation, we know that n t minus e s is Poisson distributed with parameter lambda times the length of the interval which is now t minus s and we then know that the expected value of a function of a discrete random variable is equal to the function value times the probabilities so it's the same Poisson probability density except that we have lambda times t minus s in place of lambda times t and now this exponential term doesn't depend on the index n so we can take it out of the summation and we can get rid of the exponential term inside the summation so we use the properties we used earlier so n times log of gamma is equal to the log of gamma to the power n and then the exponentials and logs are inverses of each other so we are left with gamma to the power n and we can make the replacement. Now the first term stays as it is and this summation is really the series representation of the exponential of something. Remember that e to the power x is this series representation. So here we have a longer expression in place of x but it's the same series and thus our equation simplifies. Now we can replace the expectation with this value now the two exponential terms in the middle, we can factor out t minus s and then substitute back into the equation. Now in the first two terms, we factor out 1 minus gamma and the last exponential stays as it is. So lambda times t will cancel each other. And now if you compare it to the radon nicotine derivative at time t, then you know that we just have s in place of t. So it's equal to lambda underscore s. So we see it is a martingale. The third thing we need to show that it's expected value given the trivial sigma algebra, which is the filtration at time zero is equal to one, which you can show by repeating the same steps, but we can deduce it from the expression we have for lambda underscore s. For if you substitute zero for s, then you can see that the exponent will be zero because the Poisson process start at zero. So n underscore s will also equal zero and then the exponential of zero equal one. So we conclude that this is a valid density and we thus have the red on nicotine derivative. Now remember when we were discussing the Gerson up theorem, one of the main uses of the change of probability measure was to change the drift of a process so you can do something similar here though you're also changing the intensity so let's say we have a differential of x and in line with the geometric Brownian example which we are very used to so let's say that the jump size is proportional to the value and assume it's deterministic though you can assume something that depends on the Poisson process as well as we saw in the Ito's lemma video now this process is in a local martingale. Remember the discussion of the compensated Poisson process, one has to subtract the expected value of the drift to make it a local martingale. But we subtracted this term, so we should add it back. Now in the first two terms, we can factor out x times v. So we are left with dn minus lambda times dt. 
and then the last term stays as it is. Now this dn minus lambda times dt is like a local martingale version of dn, so let's represent it by dm. And then the last term as it is. We have done nothing here, we haven't applied the change of probability measure, we just represented the same equation in two different ways. Now if we were to change the probability measure in line with the red on nicotine derivative we have here, then we have to substitute dm tilde lambda, which is like the local martingale version of the Poisson process with parameter tilde lambda, plus the gamma times lambda times dt. Because remember, tilde lambda is equal to gamma times lambda, so the drift will be different now. And we can make the substitution. And this is how the SDE will look like under the tilde measure. Now you might be wondering, we have this technique, but how does it help us? Right, so sometimes you have a stochastic differential equation with a drift and you want to get rid of the drift to turn it into a local martingale. So the change of probability measure will help. And then the calculations might be easier. And in other use, sometimes you're simulating a process with the very low parameter lambda. So you might want to try a higher parameter so you get more jumps and then adjust the output using the radon nicotine derivative and the expectations under the two are not equal but they are related as follows as you know so we have a technique that we will use occasionally and by the way we have this SDE only in terms of the Poisson process but most of the time you're interested in the jump diffusion process so you add this to the diffusion processes to enrich them to account for the jumps that one sees and the asset prices that the diffusion processes don't capture. So thanks for watching the video and I look forward to seeing you in the next.